Whew, all right. Well, just got back from another trip to Texas with the camper. I don't know, probably in the last eight months we put about 3,000 miles on it, and I've noticed over the last several trips that there's something weird going on with the axles. And I'll show you why I've noticed that. This thing's got very close tire spacing. Uh, but this last time I couldn't even get my X shock in. And I don't know how obvious it is. This tire is cooked. I mean, this is, these are the same age. that both the uh, Maxis. And this one's still got big tread on it and this one is just completely smoked off on this front the back is not great either uh, but I couldn't even get my X jock in here you can see that we'll walk around the other side which seems to be more normal and the tread isn't as bad yeah a fair bit more room in here and it almost looks like this tire is cocked this way a little bit and uh, something's moved on this back axle the front axle is not great and these tires are getting to be six years old so they're about time to change but uh, this rear axle really seems like it has shifted and it's kicked that side forward somehow I'm not sure what's going on but uh, we're going to get this thing turned around, back down the driveway a little bit, and then I'm going to attempt, oh boy, that thing's falling apart again, I guess i got to fix that, that again, six years old, I'm going to attempt to get this thing up on four jack stands on the frame, and see if I can get all four wheels off the ground at the same time, pull the wheels off, and then take some dimensional measurements from the pin to the axles, and see what the hell's going on because this side uh, this something has moved or twisted and I don't know what it is but it is ruining the tires so it's kind of time for new tires but uh, I ain't putting them on there if it's gonna keep doing this so we'll be back in a few minutes all right well she's disconnected what I'm gonna attempt to do is I've got some, some of my big jack stands over there I'm gonna attempt to get them on the frame over here and on the other side see how high they can go because if I can let the nose of the trailer way down put the jack stands all the way up and then jack the trailer up onto the jack stands it might lift this we'll see what happens alternately if that doesn't work I may end up trying to jack up one side of it and then pulling the wheels off and setting it on the jack setting it on the jack stands low but, uh, you know, without the wheels on the ground, without the wheels on it. Uh, but that's what we're going to try to do now. All right, uh, that's as high as it goes. I don't have anything easy to block that up with, so we're going to let the nose of the trailer down because it's way up right now. Slide that under as best we can, maybe even all the way up. Ooh, that was close. I'm going to sever the finger. Maybe even all the way up there if I can do it and uh, see what we can do on each side so that's what we're gonna do now we're gonna get another one set it on the other side and drop the nose of the trailer down all right well we got our jack stands in of course this little exercise made me realize I have two different types of six ton jack stands even though I bought them from the same place at the same time that one only has eight that stick up and this one has nine so <laughs> Go figure, I'm sure they're the finest grade Chinesium. And this is a 10,000 pound rig, so two six tons on the front jack should be more than adequate to hold it while I continue to jack it up and see what we can end up with. That's why I did this, because now I've also got the full tongue jack available when we get to it. Okay. It's starting to come up because we don't have a lot of weight 
left on the front tires. Looks like the frame's okay. We're right under the I beam. See how we're doing. Yeah, it looks to be all right. All right. Now the super fun part. Let's see if this can actually work. It may not. sure what we're gonna do I guess and I have to take the wheels off I guess what I'll do is now that I've got it up I'll put those other jack stands under the front in front of the wheels lower it down so it's still it's basically on the jack stands and then jack each individual corner up take the tire off and that should give me enough height uh, to get in here and get the all four wheels off and have it sitting on jack stands because that's not quite going to work so back in a minute all right oh it's hot take a break but we got it on the jack stands about as square as it's going to get i guess the uh first easiest measurement to take when I get to it is going to be center to center on these axles and see how far off they are and if they're way off what I'll probably do is measure center to the pin on the front axle make sure that's square and then square out the back axle to that if I can figure out where it even moved which at this point I still don't have any idea but this is heavy Whew. <laughs> all right well, we're back. Temperature's down from 98 to 88, and the heat index is down from 118 to just 101, so a little bit easier to work now. Let's see what we got here. I'm just going to go back to back. All right. We got right at, let's say, 32 and a little bit over half, maybe 32 and 9 sixteenths. That's on the left side that isn't screwing up. So, let's see what we got here. If this is the same, I'm going to be disappointed. It can't be, though. Can it? Anything can be, I guess. All right, get in there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we are 32 and 3 eighths. So we are at least three-eighths of an inch short. No, five-sixteenths of an inch short, let's say, on this side compared to the other side. So something has moved, and what I don't know yet is this to the front versus that to the front. So, stop it. We're going to See if I can set up something over there that I could measure to from here to the front end and see if they're about the same on the front axle and then I can just measure the back axle. But I still don't really know what possibly could have moved. But something certainly has. Because we are, as I said, 5 sixteenths narrower at the axle side to side. And that side I don't believe has changed. This side has gotten smaller. This side's always been a little tight, tire to tire, because it's been the harder side to put in the uh, the chalk. But now there is, you can't get the chalk in at all. So uh, we're going to have to figure out what's going on. So I'm going to try to take a couple of measurements of the front axle to the front and uh, see if that's interesting. 
All right, so measuring from the jack to here is 238 and 3 eighths, basically on both sides, probably within a sixteenth. So that's pretty good. But then being like 5 sixteenths difference between the sides, with that one being closer, it is not happy about that. It is not happy about that at all. So we're going to go Everything's about the same. They've never heated up when driving. Yeah, everything feels good. So we're going to sneak under there after I go get something to lay on so I'm not laying in the dirt and see if we can see where this thing moved and how the hell this thing moved forwards and if it can even be moved back it doesn't necessarily look like it. it doesn't necessarily look like it now these are torsion axles so there's no real adjustment other than these attachment bolts. And you can see it's bent, but that's normal. These are, those torsion axles have a, a kink in the center. They're not flat. So they, that's, they kind of flex this way too. Um, but I don't see anything loose. Um, I don't know. What I guess I can say is, I can see a gap in that one and this one. I can see a gap here and I don't see that on the front one. Huh. Interesting. I wonder if we just gotta loosen everything up and uh, put it all back and see what happens. But so that's what I'm going to concentrate on is getting under there, taking a look, seeing how that's put together, and then figuring how, out how to recenter this axle because the front one seems to be okay. Doesn't look right to me. So we're just going to put a little lifty lifty on this thing and see if that closes up because that's not right. This should be bound out over here. That should be up against the frame like that one. I'm not jacking on the tube, I'm just jacking on the frame of it, so we're not going to hurt the axle. Well. Huh. She's tight. I mean, I just basically lifted the whole thing. But that's, uh, I'm thinking part of my problem anyway, because the L-bracket is welded to the frame, welded to this box tubing, which is welded to the I-beam. So, yeah, this thing, something's just not right. That's probably one of been my problem all along, is this back axle is not installed correctly. It wasn't, uh, they didn't have a load on it. But it certainly isn't loose. I don't believe that's supposed to be a gap, though. So, we're going to go sneak around under there, see what we can find. All right, I don't see any obvious slide marks where the fasteners have moved. at all. Oh, yeah, that's good. Take a picture of the light, dummy. <laughs> that looks okay. I'll scoot it over to here again, even though it's cockeyed. 
I don't see any issue here. This side is good. Now what I'm going to do, <laughs> since the front axle seems to be okay, I think I'm going to take a measurement from here to here on both sides and see if they just welded the damn bracket on wrong. And if I can correct it um, without doing serious work. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. But yeah, everything else looks tight. And like I said, I jacked this up and that gap didn't close up, so it's not like anything's loose. Same thing on this side. Nothing appears to be loose. It's just uh, not positioned. But yeah, I'm going to measure from here to here on both sides and see what kind of dimension we come up with. All right, I took the measurement. Both sides, 18 inches, pretty much right on the nose, so that seems to be correct. Um, so, I guess we're going to go get some wrenches and loosen these two bolts up and see if we can move it a little bit. You know, if nothing else, maybe loosen all four of them and just twist it a little bit and then jack it up where it's supposed to be so it's flush and you're actually transferring the force through it rather than through the clamping force over here. You're actually transferring the force through these plates like you are up front. So, huh, yeah, so far the frame itself looks okay. It's just this axle, this front of this axle is 5 sixteenths too far forwards. Strange. All right. Clearance here looks good. Yeah. yeah. Nothing looks bent on the axle itself. I mean, our roads are crap, but I don't think that's the case. So, hmm. I don't know. Well, like I said, we're going to loosen that, loosen those bolts on the axle up. And then uh, see if we can shuffle it around a little bit. All right, just for poop and laughter, I took a measurement from the actual axle bracket in the front and the rear. That's 19 inches. And it's the same on both sides. Hmm. Let's see. Uh, yeah, it looks like I can get it. I think I'm going to take a measurement between the two axle tubes here and there on both sides and see what that is. All right, so the axle to axle measurements are 27 and an eighth and 27 and an eighth. What in the hell? Thirty-two and three sixteenths. Thirty-two and five eighths. What is going on here? I don't know. Something is weird because all of the brackets are square. I've done nothing. They're still gapped. They're still they're all in factory locations. The axles are square to each other. The drums are not. The wheel is not. I don't get it. Everything looks pretty darn similar. I am confused. see it because of that spare tire duck, done it. I wonder if the axles are not drooped the same amount. I'm going to check from the axle to the ground because they're on the same height jack stands on each side, so 
just to make sure they droop the same amount and I'm not getting fooled by that. But the other thing I guess I could do is get a straight edge and run it. That way, nothing looks bent. I mean, seriously, nothing looks bent. Well, something is sure out of place. Hmm. They look to be drooped about. Well, this one looks to be drooped more. I wonder if my axle shot. There. Let's see if you can see it. Oh, try this, dummy. <laughs> see how that dog bone is kind of a... Looks like it's above the triangular piece of the bracket. See how this one appears to be below the triangular piece of the bracket. Hmm. Yeah, this, uh, that one seems to be above, that one is above, this one is drooping significantly lower than the rest of them. Although that one there looks a little lower than the other, the two on that side. So yeah, I'm going to measure to the ground. This one does appear to be lower. Let's see what we got here. Something's not right. Okay, I guess just the angle is deceiving. I took some closer measurements and they're all about the same droop. So I'm gonna put the jack under each of the wheels and just jack up on it a little bit on the drum to kind of feel what its uh, spring feels like, see if there's anything loose. They don't move by hand. We're just gonna jack it up a little bit and see if the spring moves. See what that looks like. We try not to crush the backing plate and screw up the brakes. Okay. That didn't feel bad. Okay. All right. That felt okay. Get the next side. All right, under the suspect one. No different. I guess it's possible that I'll be damn. Look at this tire. Whoa. What did I hit? <laughs> this tire is junk. What in the world? That's steel belts. I'll be damned. That's my first failure of a Maxxis. Okay. Well. Apparently it isn't the axles. Now they aren't square, but they haven't moved. I've actually got a failed tire. Holy smoke. Look at that. That is crazy. Yeah, they weather checked because these, the dates, what's the dates on these? They should be 2017. 
Where's my date code? There it is. 2216. So, around May of 2016. So these tires are about well, six years old. I put them on in the fall of 2016 after we bought the trailer. Wow. Okay then. So, I think I'm still going to try to square those axles up because they are not right, but that's not my problem. The problem is this tire was coming apart and wearing strangely because of that. Well, I said it was time to replace the tires. It is. But that is a strange failure. Now, I'll give the Maxxis credit. I've put 3,000 miles on these in the last seven, eight months. And they've been wearing like this for that long. So this has been like this for a while, and it hasn't delaminated. I guess that's my, that's my stupid for not inspecting them better. But yeah, that's what it's supposed to look like. This tire has started to completely delaminate probably for about 40% 40, 40 of the tire, maybe a little more, has started to come apart. Yeah, you can see there's no weather checking here, but this side where it's all checked, it's junk. See if I'm seeing that on any of the other ones. Nope, that one seems to be good. Let's see the date on it. Twenty-two sixteen. Same date. I'll be damned. Okay, well that answers that. We're getting some new tires for this beast, and I am going to try to straighten that axle out. Now here's my good year, because I had a nail go through one. This one's a little 25 of 17. That's a little newer, but uh, it also looks no worse for wear. Let's see what this other one is. This should be the same date as the other one. Yep, 22 of 16, and you know, we have some weather checking on this one, but I don't see the tire coming apart. Ooh, all right, well, let's see a little bit of cracking, but uh, it's still stable. The tread hasn't come, it hasn't come apart to where it's wearing funny. Well, hell, okay, I guess that answers that question. Uh, it's not the axles, <laughs> but I am going to loosen those up, get them so they're flush against the top, and try to score them up as best possible, because who knows, maybe that uh, overheated that edge of the tire over the course of its life, because it's been cocked like that the whole time, maybe that overheated it, and that's what caused this wear, because that was the inside, who knows, I never showed any significant temperatures, you know, maybe a couple of degrees different on this one specifically, I remember from my tire minder, but uh, yeah, nothing where I would have thought that was going on. So, there you go. So, I guess we will, what time is it? 7.30. I'll bet, I'll bet the heat index is below 100 finally. I'm going to go get another drink of water and then see if I can loosen this axle up and get this spacing a little bit better. All right, well, I was able to flush those both up, get rid of the gaps, and whop the hell out of this one with a hammer. And now we are 27 and a half and 27 and a half on both sides and no gaps up against the frame like it's supposed to be. And I ugga dugga the crap out of them right to factory torque spec, I'm sure. And that's enough for tonight. So, I'm going to go looking around on DiscountTireDirect.com, not a sponsor, see what kind of sales they got, see if I can get some new, and I still like the Maxxis, 
uh, Maxxis M8008 or the uh, Goodyear Endurance, whatever they happen to have in stock, in the E-load rating, because these have run extremely well and been fairly well neglected for five to six years. And that one's just starting to come apart now. And again, this is a heavy trailer. This trailer's, I mean, every time we take it out, it's no less than 9,000 pounds. So, there's a lot of weight on these things. That's why I went from the went to the E-rated tires from the D's that came on it from the factory, because that's just, yeah, it theoretically works, but it's just not, not reasonable. So, all right. I guess I will get back with you once we get the tires done and let you know what we got. So hopefully that takes care of my scrubbing issue. It isn't an axle, although I was able to square up the axles, so now they're even, where they weren't quite before. But that new tire should take care of it. Anyway, I guess it's 4th of July, so happy, uh, happy Independence Day. And I will uh, see you all in the next one. Hope you all having a good night. Take care.